Hey there guys, got our results of the 12 week hydro versus cocoa versus soil, organic soil and chili pepper grow test. I've had them set up each in the four by two tents here, the same light, the array four delivering about 800 micromoles of power average, so nice high level, same environment, so same temperature, humidity conditions, and looking at the efficiency or effectiveness of the three different media to grow these uh, the plants to um, see what yield we can get from them. So these are all uh, clones, so the very same genetics in terms of the plant. And what we're looking at really is the, um, as I said, the effectiveness or efficiency of the media. This one here is organic soil, certified organic soil using worm, with worm casings and rotted horse manure and we have supplemental feed from the BioBiz um, organic nutrients. And as you can see, it hasn't done that well in comparison to the others. Um, lots of arguments online about we should be using um, living soil, living soil perform better. If you have objective evidence, so proof of that, a similar test like these showing one against the other, I'd love to see them. Please leave them in the comments if you're making a comment like that. Put your evidence with it, please. Um, previously, we used a peat-based soil. It actually seemed to perform better relative to the cocoa. Um, this organic soil is maybe um, not best suited to these chilies in fairness. But uh, the plants have been healthy and they have a good yield of fruit. Um, some maturing at the bottom, I think you can see there. Interestingly, it's not the chilies exposed to light that redden, it's the older chilies, which tends to be the ones at the bottom. So it's about maturity, not exposure to light. See here with the hydro, the steep water culture. So we've got air, um, we've got circulation pumps and air pumps and changing the reservoir every 10 days or thereabouts and all the issues and the complexity to go with it using RO water. Um, been using the Samurai, the Shogun Samurai nutrients for the uh, for the hydro and the cocoa. So these are synthetic, but uh, wow, it is incredible the growth. And this is why we've we've called it a day, really, because this is bursting out of the tent. It just can't grow anymore in this confined space. So it's ready for harvest. Um, cocoa initially was keeping up with the hydro and did well, but uh, as you can see, there is um, there is no competition. The hydro has just uh, knocked it out of the park. Uh, cocoa is nice and healthy too, no issues with it. Uh, previously we had some infestations and stuff, we have no problems with that so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop these down, we're going to look at the root structure in each, we're going to look at the physical yield in terms of the plant mass and then the um, fruit. I'm going to do taste tests on each of the chilies from each one and also use a Brix a refractometer which measures the um, the sugar content basically in each fruit to see one which ones are higher quality uh, objectively so let's go chop these down and see what we find here's the soil roots with the aeropot edges removed and there are um, roots getting all the way to the edges some fine roots but they're not very densely packed they're going all the way down through the pot and all the way to the edges but again not so densely packed, <clears throat> cut through quite easy and um, yeah not hugely impressive. The cocoa roots much more developed, much more dense to the edges, again all the way down through the pot and to the edges and uh, oh yeah you feel the density of that now just cutting through really whoa really strong and um, really comprehensive lots of networks of roots there right through it so pretty impressive root development see the hydro now with very very densely packed root system a really really dense um, buffed it up here from the bubbles which has compacted it but uh, very well developed and a big mass of roots there got the plants chopped down now this is the soil harvest that's the plant matter there's the chilies and um, 
got plant mass of 1.2 kilograms, chilies of 599 grams. Chilies are quite mature there though. In terms of the hydro, you can see a lot more plant mass. Chilies, a bit bit, little bit less developed. Yeah, it may have needed a bit longer. The plant mass being 5.4 kilograms, so four and a half times as much. Chili mass, 950 grams, one and a half times as much. In terms of the um, cocoa then, quite a lot of plant mass. Chili's well developed, not as well as the soil, but much better than the hydro. And um, plant mass, 3.2 kilograms, so it's so that two and a half times the soil and uh, chili mass 862, so in the middle, nearly at the hydro level. So quite a win there for the, uh, the hydro. So the results are in, and it's a pretty conclusive win for the hydro, far bigger plant yield than both the cocoa and the soil. Cocoa, me cocoa coming in second, a pretty good performance, uh, and soil not doing so great, particularly with these um, chili plants in any case. In terms of the fruit, I'm not sure exactly why the soil developed um, fruit developed earlier and uh, was more mature. Maybe you can comment if you know below. Um, it did objectively test the quality of the fruit. So I use a Brix refractometer to uh, test the sugar content. Um, I got three um, chilies from each plant, mashed them up, squeezed out the juice and tested it with the refractometer. Uh, for sugar content and the cocoa had 7%, the soil 6 and the hydro 5. I think that's reflecting really the, um, the immaturity of the hydro fruit. Uh, however, I think that hydro fruit would have matured in time and uh, would have developed more. This channel is all about maximizing your yield from your grow light system. And in that case, I would be recommending if you really want to maximize your yield to go for hydro, I'm not so convinced about the arguments about the quality of, um, you know, the potency of, um, of hydro. I've had plenty of experience of um, tasting from soil cocoa and hydro. And if it's grown well in hydro, I believe it could be just as potent and just as nicely flavored and, and, and good, as good taste and aroma from, um, from the hydro systems. Our next test is going to be really interesting. We're going to do Similar chili grow, same genetics, same setup in four foot by two foot tents with uh, cocoa this time in both tents, but we are going to supplement with CO2 in one of them in a closed system. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of potential yield increase you can get from that. So stay tuned for the next series. That'll be um, CO2 versus non-CO2. Now I've got to do what I think a lot of you have been waiting for, which is a taste test. So take one from the um, cocoa, which is the sort of middle one, and uh, we're going to see how tasty these guys are. Whoa, burst of flavor, burst of fruit, very intense heat. Oh my God, I think I just bit into the chilies, I did. I got some chili seeds in there. So that is intense. That is really, really hot. Um, I don't know where it is on the scale, but um, eyes watering immediately, starting to belch, burp. Don't know if I want to continue this, but uh, I just tell, I give you the joy of looking at me eating a very hot and raw chili. So uh, signing out. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. Oh.